Okay. All right. So welcome everyone again. This is Dr. Yam, your Keep It Simple coach. And today we are doing Demo Day. So Demo Day is an opportunity for each of you to get kind of an inside peek into Content Latte. This is a, a tool that is incorporated into your toolkits, and it allows you an opportunity to go to the build level. A step. Hey. All right. So oh, welcome, everyone, again. This is Dr. Yam, your Keep It Simple coach, and today we are doing Demo Day. So Demo Day is an opportunity for each of you. <laughs> it launched in my own side. Isn't that interesting? Okay. So today what I want to do is go through the build portion of your kit. So with the build portion of your kit, like I said, it's called the sweet spot. So you need to find a home, a space for your offer to uh, live. And for many of you, you may not already have a place for that or given it some consideration. So I wanted to also highlight for you one of the resources that comes inside of your boot camp itself, and that is our content latte platform and how you can utilize it. So um, today, what I thought I'd do, oh, it's not researching on my screen, is to walk you three, through um, three of the primary components that are going to be beneficial for you. And those four pieces are for you to selecting a template, building out a page, which is going to be your landing page itself, um, building out your store, where are you going to um, host or house the product that you are giving as an offer, to your intended audience, and then building out your email sequence. And those are the three key components in the build piece, aside from actually creating your product. Um, that uh, was under, uh, I think it's step uh, three in your, in your content book, where there's uh, tools and templates that I've provided for you to create the actual product. A list, a checklist, a report, um, a planner, whatever you so choose. It could just even be coming into a webinar as an event, however you feel is going to best meet the needs and attract the people who you want to become customers for you. And using a product as a low content, low ticket offer as well. So the reason why we're going to be using the store functionality is that uh, for many of you, you're selling your low ticket cost item, and it's not necessarily having to be for free. It certainly can be for free, but you can also do it at a price point. So you have both options available to you inside of the store. And then obviously we wanted to make sure that you're, you have enhanced communications with your people who are opting into that offer. So we're going to walk you through um, some of this uh, highlights of what that could look like for you inside of the content latte tool. So the first thing we're going to be working through is um, the funnel template itself. So you may have also um, inside of the kit have um, the worksheet for the funnel. And basically what you're creating right now is your top of funnel, your kind of lead magnet, and then taking them through the rest of the series of, of opportunities that you want to provide to them, depending on where they are in their pain points and how you're bringing a solution to them by way of your product or your service. So I'm gonna be demoing for you how there are templates already uh, created for you inside of the platform that you're able to simply customize. And then we're going to set up a store, very simple to do, um, in order for you to connect and people can access your resources right away. And it really will help to streamline the steps that you will have to take. So it really becomes very beneficial when you can set up things very simple and easily, and then you can kind of set it and forget it. And then again, email automations. And this is that email sequencing, some of which you've already experienced from me and from other vendors as you've opted into the different um, items that are inside of the uh, BC stack, for instance. And so hopefully you've been watching and seeing how others are modeling this type of um, strategy and that you're taking light of that and you can also gain wisdom and hey, take a little from the a little over here and a little over there and make it your own and use it as inspiration. So um, that's kind of just the nuances of being a solopreneur, freelancer, or a coach. And then once you are um, once I've done that for you, then you have an opportunity to activate your account. And let me give you a little bit of a strategy on how to best do that. So don't worry about that. So I'm gonna share, I'm gonna switch over this screen real quick. And I'm going to switch over and go to our platform itself. 
And if you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to um, drop them here inside of the um, chat and I'll be happy to answer those questions for you. Okay, so. Okay, I'm looking at some chats right now before we get started. Okay, the GDRP compliance is built into the platform. Um, so in most, in most platforms themselves really do um, address that. So you should have no problems with respect to that, depending on whatever country that you're living in. So they're very mindful of that because it all affects all of us in one shape, form or fashion. So no worries with respect to that. Um, in being GDP um, compliant, but that's on the platform itself, which is different than your website. So many of you taking in interest in Content Latte as a part of the kit or other types of similar platforms um, usually will have a built-in compliance component. You have to make sure that it is turned on. So um, I can certainly take talk about that afterwards in the Q&A portion. So uh, let's get started with the demo. So I'm gonna turn on and take you over to my platform and over here to the tools itself. And let me just take, um, hopefully it's not gonna let me. There we go. And I'm going to share my screen again. Sorry for that. Alrighty, so when you first, just a little bit about Content Latte as a platform. So this is what we call our digital one-stop shop for entrepreneurs. So here is a space that's been designed specifically for those who are new, who want to have a very centralized um, one place to do all of their business operations when it comes to marketing and content marketing in particular, as far as digital marketing, but where you can also house all of your um resources and materials when it comes to your offers. And so what you have here inside of Content Latte is a platform that has really eight components. We're not going to hit all eight today, but the capacity is there for you to create web pages, landing pages, have your e-commerce, do your funnels themselves, pop-ups, membership, um, email automations and marketing, as well as your uh, customer relationship um, system or what we call management system, which is our CRMs, as well as bookings and appointments. So depending on the nature of your business, whether it's a product or a service, we basically have all the resources um, at your disposal that you can take advantage of. So today we're going to really focus on three of those components. The website, which are the, i.e. your funnels and your page for that, your e-commerce, and the email automation. But do know that you can explore and take advantage of all the features and functions. They're all there inside of uh, the platform and then they're all accessible no matter what plan that you happen to um, subscribe to. So you do have that. Make sure I'm sharing the right screen. Okay. It's going to let me. All righty. So, can everybody see my screen okay? Because I want to make sure I am taking this over here for my recordings. Sometimes my screen, just give me a thumbs up or down inside of the chat, and that will help me to figure out and I make sure that I'm not off center here. Why is my screen? Okay, thank you. Thank you for that, Jenna and Caitlin. Thank you. I cannot get my thing to go full screen. All right. Hopefully you can see it without you seeing the overlay. But so when you first start out with your offer and you've decided it's going to be in this a digital product or it could be for mail, it doesn't matter. The first thing that you want to think about is what will your presence look like? So we have simplified that for you in the way of selecting templates. 
So templates are basically just easy ways to jumpstart the work, particularly if some of us are not as, you know, maybe creative and, but you have the content. And so it's just a matter of making some edits, change the text, change the picture, but the layouts and everything pretty much already done for you. And that's one of the great things about using a builder, such as the Content Latte platform. So when you first come in, this is kind of on the back end, you're looking at this from that angle. So this is what you will see when you initiate your account and you will have an opportunity to um, create uh, your websites and funnels. We keep them separate because of the nature of how they behave. So a funnel is gonna be an opportunity where you are building a interaction of behaviors where people, depending on when they click, is where you're going to take them. And a simple basic funnel that you'll see today is just a landing page, an opt-in, and a thank you page. They can be very extensive um, funnels, and, and I design lots of them all the time for my clients. They can get very extensive in, in lot types of events, like a webinar funnel is very different from a, a book funnel, which is then very different maybe from a bookings funnel. So they all have different nuances, but for today, we're gonna to keep it simple and to align with what you have in your um, kit within the offer, first offer kit, um, a simple lead matinee for lead generation is where we're gonna be demonstrating today. So you can notice here, I have it under my funnel. So these happen to be funnels and I happen to have one I created for today as an example. But let me first take you to, when you first choose, you wanna choose a template. So here we're going to click on create a funnel. And here's where you're gonna see a large library of different funnels that you can shoot, templates rather, that you can choose from. We do have them categorized so that you can say, well, I know I wanna create a lead magnet funnel. So I'm gonna click on lead magnet and the layouts are already there. And all you have to do is customize them. So these are all, and you can come in and look at, you can see there's quite a few lists to choose from. Some of them are already labeled like a book magnet versus maybe a webinar or a course. So you have access to different types and maybe it's even a coupon. So they can come in a variety of ways. And then what you'd like to do if you want is you could simply click on, excuse me, <clears throat> you could simply click on the preview button. And what preview is gonna allow you to do is see the components inside the funnel. So these are each page or each segment of the funnel is separate. So you'll have an opportunity here. Step one is gonna be your opt-in on this particular case. And then the second one is simply a download. So it could be just that simple of a funnel depending on the nature of the product or the service and where you are and what you're trying to accomplish with your particular offer. So you can simply take a look at any of them that are here. Simply, like I said, pick on a, a preview, Again, landing page, an opt-in. Sometimes the opt-ins are a page. Sometimes they may be a pop-up. And then you can, again, just to, um, pick each one. You can take a preview of each one. This is what a pop-up would look like. And then this is what the download page would look like. And we always try to encourage people to minimize what we call friction. Friction is where you're trying, you're making people take a lot of steps to get where they need to go. And we want to minimize friction. So we want to keep as many different um, distractions or distractors out of the equation. So you keep it as simple as possible so that people can get what they came for and they're not going to get distracted or give second thought to the offer and opting in. Because remember the whole point of a lead magnet is that it's an exchange, an email address for either a low ticket offer for a fee, the person they're giving their credit card. But if it's a freebie offer, then you're exchanging it in, with an email address so that they can get the freebie. And then you're initiating a relationship between you and the new person. So you want to keep that transaction as simple as possible and as easy as possible. So don't make people jump through a whole bunch of hoops. Don't feel like you need to get all their information. That's not what lead madness or are intended for or for initial offer. It's to get people inside of your funnel and then you are going to nurture them as you go down the funnel with them. So um, 
a lot of what you'll see there. There's actually one specifically for you in, for the kit that you have, for some of you who are joining and have the kit, that um, we have one here that's called the Design, Build, and Sell Your First Offer Toolkit Template. And I just felt as though this was a simple one just to get all the information given the nature of the course content and what you would be trying to offer yourselves. So this would be what it would look like. And you can, in and of itself, check the preview. And here is the um, product. And if it's a low ticket offer, then you have the space for that. And you're just going to come in here and make the edit. So this is your product page. You then have a checkout page because in this case, it's low ticket. So they're making a purchase. So your e-commerce is going to be connected to this piece. And then they're going to pay. You brand it as you would. And then the next thing is the thank you. And then... And depending on the nature of it, if it's a, if they can download it, you have an opportunity to hit the download button immediately, or you're going to uh, seg, uh, you will initiate the email automation and put the information in the welcome email sequence as well. And you also have that template that came inside of your kit. All right. So choose the template that best will work for you. So I'm going to take us back. So here, once you selected your template, then it's just a matter of doing what we call tweaks. You want to edit it with the language, the marketing language that is going to make the ideal connection with your intended audience. So you should already have identified who is your ideal customer and what is it that they're looking for. And that way you want to be able to talk to that particular pain point and incorporate that marketing copy, keeping it very simple. You will notice even in the templates, it's not very text heavy. You don't want, people know what they want when they see it. You, that's why it's important for you to make sure that you're using language that they can connect with. And so you don't need to have a lot of information there because they'll know it when they see it, if that's something that they want. Once you get further down the funnel and once things become more expensive, then, of course, it becomes you have to validate so that the kind of like um, a balance between copy and the price point. So the more detail you have to be when you start going further down the funnel is the higher up your price points are. That makes sense. So you want to keep things as simple as possible and the templates themselves offer you that just so that you have some sense of what would be considered too much, that you have to convince someone to buy something. Usually, again, if they've gotten a real quick win with you and you're taking them further down the funnel, then they're able to make decisions and start the know, like, and trust factors and enhance that between you and them. So here, when you're first starting out inside of the template, you're going to see the builder component. So a funnel is those three pages, the landing page and opt-in where they're going to give their information. If this is a no purchase offer, which I'm going to demonstrate for the sake of today, and then a thank you um, page. So these are the three components. You have more steps that you can add. Like I mentioned, funnels can be as extensive as you like. I've done funnel steps that can be 20 steps because we're taking them through a lot of different um, experiences and offers, upselling and downselling and the like. But for today, we're going to keep it simple to these three steps. So the first page that you're going to offer when you get into your template is going to be the landing page, that piece right here. So when you click on it, this is going to be a page that you're going to be able to be in the builder experience. And so you'll have components. Everything here is designed on what we call blocks and widgets. So it's very intuitive. It's a lot of clicking and dragging. So if you're familiar with using PowerPoint or your Word documents um, or Google Docs and the like, um, the same type of, of thinking and intuitiveness comes alongside inside of this particular platform for your building purposes. So you don't need to know any code, um, any HTML and all that. Else. You can certainly go on the back end for those who are tech savvy like that. You certainly can, but we've made it so that it's a uh, drag and drop. And all you have to do is make those simple edits and changes. So once you've created and picked your particular template, you get to modify it. 
This particular template is, um, you'll notice has a block across the top and anything that you hover over, it'll tell you where you are in any of the components. So in this particular case, it also tells you where are the three steps. The statuses are right here. So you're able to say, here's step one. Uh, we're not doing any A-B testing. That's a little bit more advanced functionality. Um, but then you can move over to another step. If I clicked up here, this is that pop-up and I can go in here and make edits. Um, and then I can close it. And then if I want to, I can certainly come over here to my menu bar and maneuver because of the pop-up, it doesn't let you jump over to the other one. So over here in your um, menu bar, you're gonna notice a couple of icons. The first one is your pages. So if you have multiple pages, they're gonna be laid out for you here. Um, funnels and websites behave very similarly. So you'll see a lot of the same tool is utilized throughout the entire platform. No matter what you're building, the builder is the same, which is really nice. Let me hit my chat, see what the chat. Okay, hold on one second. Okay, let me, okay, I'll move that. Okay, I'll move that to channels. Okay, thank you. Can you see my screen now? Okay, though, I know the slide deck was coming out small, so I apologize for that. Thank you. No, no, it's still oh, Jenna's, it's still Jenna's uh, screen, which is black. Now the four of us on the screen. That's what I see. So you weren't looking at my screen? No, so what I was seeing was Jenna's, Jenna's black screen. And hmm. on top of it was your slide, which is a tiny little on the top. But yeah, now I, I can see, see your slides. Yeah, now I can see your slides. Okay, I don't know. I don't know, know what happened in the meantime. Okay, I, I just re yeah. went ahead and reset it just to be on the safe side. So thank yeah. you. Great, right. thank you. No worries. And let me, I know what I'm gonna do. Let me take it here to there. All right, that'll be better. Apologize for that. Um, so here on the back end, so you have, like I said, your pages. So the same pages, your landing page, your opt-in page, and your thank you page are sitting right here for you. The next icon that you have are the widgets. These are the building blocks that are gonna be uh, builders, components of what we call widgets inside of web, web design. So here is where you're gonna be able to add other components than what's already in the template. So you have like a header text, your text boxes, buttons, images, um, if you want menu bars, all of the components are here if you need to use a spacer. Um, and like I said, you can start from scratch. Ideal, ideally, it's best that you can start from a template and not waste any time. There's even components here for lead generation. If you wanna place a form right here on this page, you could do that. All of the components are sitting for in here for you to click and drag over. So if I wanted to place a form here, for instance, as an example, I can click and drag this over. And now I have the form already there. And now I can edit the form fields. What information do I want to collect and then um, make my um, particular um, edits if I so choose. So it's just that easy to click and drag it over. And then I can simply, if I want to, hover over any object that's there and I can delete it. The next hover uh, button that you have your, in your menu is your style guide. So this is where it becomes uh, helpful for you so that you can then change over the colors to your brand colors. These won't be your colors that are in the template, right? So you can simply change your style guides here. If you want to have a specific type of a font that matches with your brand, you simply can come in here and make the adjustments that you want to in your for your text. You also have the same for hold on a second, my go. You also have the same, if you need to add fonts when in your account, you can add fonts. Um, these are just the generic ones that you would normally find like inside of Canva and Google and search. But if you have very specific fonts because of the brand that you design, then you can upload your fonts to the platform. You then have your color palette. Here is where you'll get to modify the colors relevant to your brand. So in this case, this is my primary color and these are my secondary colors. And you'll have to kind of play with it to know where those second and primary colors are landing, but you certainly can 
um, replace them with whatever the templates are with your own brand colors, and they will apply to all of the pages and you don't have to sit there and waste time doing those modifications. Those are the primary pieces to, to focus on there. The next one is the funnel itself, which again is where you're, so there's pages and then there's the funnel and how they are sequencing. So step one is the landing page. Step two is gonna be the opt-in page and step three is going to be the thank you page. You can, if you want to, you can add more steps like I mentioned. And then you have your funnel settings. Here is just some technical components that you may wanna take advantage of. For instance, if you are wanting to, whenever somebody sees your offer and you want to share it on social media, typically it's not going to be the entire page of the, the landing page. You want to create a, um, a representation of that is what we call a social image, social sharing image. And you can do that again inside of your Canva account and um, create that. And that will be when anybody sh um, shares the landing page or you share the landing page URL to the uh, to either Facebook or Instagram or Twitter, they're going to see this image as the offer image. So this is what it will look like. And then you can select it and put it in that holding space. And that way, anytime you go to share, that's what they will see. If you want to have a favicon, meaning the icon is going to be up here in the upper corner on the tabs when people are in the browser, you can replace that as well. Those are some of the main highlights. You also can create and customize the domain. By default, you're going to be um, dot, whatever name you want it to be, dot contentlatte.co. If you want to use a specific domain for your offer, you're able to you know, secure that domain. I use Namecheap as an example, and then you can create an, an existing one and populated here if you want in the settings. So those are just some of the nuances that you have op opportunities to do. And you also are going to have your SEO. So here is um, your title, your meta description, as well as um, for both the, pay the SEO page and the actual page information. So here's where you can make those types of edits for each of the names. So if you want to, you want to give it a specific name for your offer, you can do that. Pause. Question? Yes. So Content Latte is uh, is my own uh, company. Yes. So I, I started the platform. Yes. If that's the question. Thank you for asking. So those are some of the tools that you're going to see here on the side. And then as you are making your edits and your tweaks, you also have an ability to um, preview what's, what's working and what's not working. So here is your um, website preview. So you can click on this. I don't know if this is going to show when I changed it. Yeah, it should come in here. And this is what it will look like, both in the desktop view. So as you're creating and making the edits, you can check and see how things are looking. This is how, if you click up here, you can have the three different um, views. Desktop, here's the tablet view. So this is what, when somebody uses a tablet and goes to that offer page, this is how it's going to look to them. Notice the difference in how the overlay is happening, right? So you want to keep, if it doesn't matter to you, and then, as long as they can see the information, but just know that this is how the, the layouts will adjust. This is what we call responsive design. So, so this is how things will modify um, over, the dis over the types of devices. And then this is what it's going to look like when it's in a cell phone. So you can design in this mode as well, if you like, because if you feel as though the majority of your people are going to be seeing your offer on a device, then on a desktop, then maybe you might want to do the layout in that view as you're doing it versus the other way around. And you can kind of get a sense for that with some of the other data that's out there that will allow you to know the types of devices people are using as they're landing on your page. So there's a lot of great um data that points that are out there with different tools that you can um, that you can utilize not necessarily inside a content latte but there are other tools out there that do things like that all righty so in this particular layout as an example 
it, it this has a background image. So you'll notice that the picture is sitting behind and taking up the, the, the behind the screens portion of this particular block. So if I click on the block button, and you see it has a cog button next to it. So that means I, there's settings. So here, if I click on that, I'm able to change the background to either a solid color or I can make it a picture. So if I chose to make it a delete this picture, then it's going to be the color background that's here. And I can make the change of whatever I want to using the hex code numbers here or using the palette that's here. Or again, your default colors. Notice how the default global colors are showing up for you here. So you have a choice depending on the nature of it, how you wish to choose. So I want to pick my picture back up. I'm going to click here to image icon. And inside here is my library of pictures. And there's my picture. I'm going to select it. And now it comes back. So this just happens to be the nature of this particular template and layout. So they all work a little differently, but I just wanted to highlight some of those functionalities. But it's just that simple to do. It does, but it does make it look really nice at the same time. Then you'll notice here, this is a, a block. So everything again are in blocks or columns. So here inside of the column, this is one column, you have text boxes. You simply can double click and you're able to make the edits to your copy. You can choose the font, the height, size, and the color are all, all there. Very similar to what you do now inside of your Word and your PowerPoint. So these are not uncommon. You can even incorporate um, hyperlink text inside of here as well. Simply highlight the text put in the URL. And then there's a component here for your button. So in this particular case, this is where, again, you're going to um, change the color. So here under the edit is where you can change the label. You can also say, well, what are they going to do when they click on it? What's going to happen to them? And that's where you get to choose um, the next step. So in this particular case, when somebody clicks on this particular offer, it's going to take you here and you're going to specify what do you want to happen when that person clicks on the button. In this particular template, it's designed already for you that take them to the next step in the funnel. And what was the next step in the funnel? The opt-in page. So you can just say here, choose next step in the funnel. Or if it's an advanced type of a funnel, then you can say something very specific and you can tell it to go there. But it's simply going to go in the next step like I showed you earlier. And that's how that is set up for you. But you have you can cut it both ways. Now, if I click on here, you'll see the artist pen, which is universal throughout. And that is another opportunity for you to make edits to the appearance. So if I click on here, here's my button color, here's my border color. Here is the text style if I want to put a shadow behind it and such. So you can make it as fancy as you like. And the same thing here with this one, this column. Again, background color. If I wanted to put a picture behind it, I could. And then the layout. It's simply a matter of preference, but try not, you don't have to spend a, my whole point of this is saying when you create a template, go in, make the edits, and keep it moving. Do not get in design um, distraction and that way um, you're never going to move past it. Every, it's never going to be perfect, but it's done for you in such a way that you can be confident and comfortable with what's being put up there. Worry more about the copy, right? And picking relevant pictures that make sense that align to your brand and what you have there. Yes. So yeah, um, I'm gonna address your questions at the end, but yes, you do have a trial. I'm gonna tell you how to best use the trial so that you don't waste time with the window that you have for the trial. So that's the landing page. And then below here is another block. <clears throat> and again, these are all components that come from the widget section. These are, this is the header, this is text. These are another block. These are pictures and placeholders. And so now you can give some further information about your offer. 
What are some key information that would be useful for that person to say, you know what, this is for me. This is information I know I want. So how do you want to convey that information? And so you can make it as that detailed as you want. Remember, the funnels are as extensive and very simplistic as you want to make them. But these two, again, as a part of the funnel template are already there. And all we did is make some edits to it and put in the relevant pictures some labels and some corresponding copy. And then again, at the bottom, you always want, if the longer you make a page, the more opportunities you wanna be able to give people to click and opt in. One is one number, one at the very top is not enough. And then they're scrolling at the bottom and then what do you expect them to do? So put yourself in the head of your buyer. And then you'll be able to customize it as well. This is all based on a template. Okay, and you can come in here and make the same modification. All the edits and things applies as far as adding and editing the widgets are all uh, here for you. Let's go into the pop-up. So I'm gonna go back here to the pages and I'm gonna go to the opt-in. The same tool applies. I'm not gonna, gonna say no disregard. <clears throat> so here, the same tool applies. So here's the opt-in for when a person clicks on that button, this is what's gonna pop up for them. Here again is where you're able to make your edits. I can change the color of my background. If I wanted to make it a picture, I could, but I didn't. Um, and you can make the placement, like where do you want this pop-up to land on the landing page? You can say here, the full page, at the top of the page, the bottom of the page, the left of the page, the center. You get to choose placement when somebody pops up the offer, where will it look? Where will it land rather? Here, you'll notice when I hover over, this is a background image, very similar to what we just experienced earlier. So if I click on change that background image, this is the um, full picture, but notice how it's landing here on the background. You're not seeing it all because of the overlay of the text box itself, but at least you can see again, this is how you can manipulate it. And then you can do that positioning um, as well. So you can make the layouts, choosing them up, uploading your images, take your images from the free image um, sources that I provided inside of the toolkit. And you can make the simple edits of text edits here, sign up, learn more. Typically, the only thing you need for a lead magnet is going to be a name and an email address. You can ask for a phone number. I would never make it um, required unless they're opting into something that is requiring um, like either text messaging and, and some type of a reminder as a requirement, okay? But just the fir those first two components are really all you need. And then you always want to just save your work as you're going through, and then you can close it. I'm going to go back here to the last page is the thank you page. So you're seeing the layout components are all similar in nature as far as the building blocks and all of the components in it. So all you get to do, like I said, very similar to what you are accustomed to doing inside of a Word or a PowerPoint, you're clicking and dragging components together and addressing them. And again, with the template, you're really just making the quick edits. So here is where you can make edits to the title, giving you a quick thank you. I always like to show what they're getting. What does that look like in that image? So remember in the kit, one of the things that I take you through is creating your image, your product image. So that product image is what's gonna show up here for your store and what it's gonna be as that placeholder. And then so people will recognize what is it that they're gonna get when they download it, it should match. So now that you've given um, them an opportunity to opt in and they've given you the email address, then you can simply give them the report. So here's how that page lays out. I put my picture image over here and my label and then here, is where you're going to be connecting to your store. So in the store, what that means is here, when you click your edit button, there's gonna be an opportunity for you not only to type in your button of like what uh, down, in this case is download, but open to click. And this is where you're going to get connect this page to your store. So when you click on here, again, what are you asking the person to do when they click on it? You want them to download what they asked for, your product. So there's gonna be an option for you here to go to your store product list 
say, click on the store as an example, and the specific product that they will have access to if it's a digital product. If it's something that's going to ship, they won't get that information. They're just going to get follow-up information of it's coming soon and your email sequencing is going to offer them the other details respective of the type of um, product or service that they purchase. In this particular case, it's a digital one. So I'm going to put that up inside of our store and you're going to be able to pick it. So this is the name of the product. And then I hit select and I'm going to show you next how to set up a product. So let me close that real quick. And I don't want to make any changes to the discard. Okay, let me take any questions. Let me hit. Okay. Yes, it's very clear. Thank you for that, Caitlin. Um, I appreciate that. We tried really hard to make the platform uh, easy to use and intuitive enough so that you, I don't want to say you can't think, but you certainly don't have to think. <laughs> um, you can focus on other things. So thank you for that. All right, so now um, we're going to go to the store. So the great thing again about that whole platform is you have everything that's built in. So the store is gonna hold both digital pieces of products as well as physical placeholder representations of things that will be um, order for order. So what you're able to do here is to simply click up here to the store. Notice right now we're still in builder. We're gonna click over to the store. And here is a very easy uh, way to set up your store if you haven't done it already. You're going to create your product. You're going to connect a payment processor. PayPal or Stripe are the two um, ones that are, are predominant here in the US. There, but we use all of the different payment systems that are out there. So we have a full list um, on, you'll see kind of representations of that inside of the, on our promo page. But um, as long as you have what we call an API code, you're able to integrate with a payment system. So no worries, no matter what country you're in, for the most part, we've got you covered. Um, and then you're going to give some um, store details. You can create an information in that way. And if there's any shipping method information, you, if you're sending something of a physical nature, like for instance, I ship out my um, deck of cards from my social media platform. And so in that particular case, I'm going to get shipping information and also give um, details with respect to shipping costs and things like that. You will put all that bit of information inside of your store details as well. So what you're going to do over here, you'll notice in the e-commerce part of the screen, is you have orders. If you have any, they're going to show up here for you. And then here is the product. So here is the report that I created for the demo, and that's sitting here. And I'm going to reproduce it for you so you can see the steps. But essentially, you're going to click over here to add a product. It's very simple to do. You have a choice, physical product, a digital product. If it's a service like coaching or consulting, or if it's part of a membership component, because we do have a membership component in the platform for building out for courses and the like, then you choose the type of product and then all of the components associated with it are what's going to be there. So we're going to choose a digital product. So this is going to be your eBooks. Um, or your um, audio files and things like that. So you'll click on it. You're going to give it a name. And then you're going to give it some description. And then you get to put a price to it. If it's free, then you leave it at zero. If it is going to be a paid for type of an offer, put the price point there, put the retail price, okay? There's a component there whenever you wanna put a product on sale. So sometimes we may wanna say, you know, I regularly sell it for $97, but I'm gonna put it on sale this week for $57. So you can put the sales price here if you wanna. So if I wanted to make this a purchase product, I'm going to say this one is going to be regularly, it's uh, $17, but on sale, I make it $5. Okay. And then if you, if it's a subscription type of a product, then you have to be able to charge. That's when you're charging somebody on a routine basis. So you have both ways of selling. 
one-time purchase and subscription-based as well for reoccurring charges. So if that's the type of product that you're putting out there, then you'll have access to that. If you are keeping SKU numbers because you have inventory, then you certainly want to keep track of that. You have the ability to putting that information here in the platform as well. And then again, is it a digital physical product by default because of what we selected is still digital. Now you're choosing the product file because it's a digital product, then that means it's something that somebody can get digitally more likely as a PDF. So I'm gonna go ahead here and click it. And also note this fine print. I wanna just make you aware of this as well. And I always keep this in mind when I'm doing this and I put it in my email, in my email notification. You might've noticed it yourself when you got the kit. This kit was digital and you downloaded it as a product and it gives you a downloadable link. And that link is only good for, the, for 24 hours. Why do we do that? One, so people get the stuff that they ask for is not sitting out there. So you certainly can send them a relink if you want to. We want to encourage people if, if, they're, if they really wanted it and we want them to use it and find value in it. So that's why that's important. So you're going to click on your item, your product, and I'm going to choose, I made it a PDF. So here's my PDF document and I hit select where you upload it if you haven't already up there. And now that's the product. When it hit the download button, that's what they're going to get. And they're also going to get a conf an automated confirmation email from the platform in, in addition to whatever you send. We just send that out there because it's a commerce and we want to make sure people are getting what they paid for. So you set up that. And then you also have some other components that you can check out later. You have your inventory tracking. So like I said, if I have 100 of these inside of my house, then I want to make sure I'm keeping track that there's only so many left. If you want to make a custom page, you can do that. If you want to ask additional questions, you can do that as well. And you also can tag customers. Tagging is just a way. So when a person buys this particular one, you want to say, I want that person to be tagged as the demo day product. They purchased that. So you can create a tag. If you don't already have one, you can create one on the fly. So I'm going to say every time somebody buys this demo opt-in, I want them to get tagged as tag, just so I can delete it, demo day product. And then I hit submit. Now, every time that person, there'll be a checkbox. If there's more there, they'll just, you uncheck the ones that you don't need and you confirm it. Now, anytime somebody makes that purchase, that's going to be associated inside of your, your um, contact list as a person who made a purchase. And you can do some really great aggregation of data when you have that available. Make sure you then hit your save button after you've made all your changes. And now you also have a place over here for an image of your product. Like I mentioned inside of the course kit, you want to make sure that you have all the visuals associated with your offer. So make sure that you create a image file of the cover of your product, whatever it is. I'm going to do the same here. This is what it looks like. And now I have it there. Oops. Sorry. And we're done. So now that's the image product there. We have our pricing. Everything is good. Here's a direct URL if you want to. You can even put some more SEO just on this product page so that can resonate inside of the search engines if you like. So now that that's all done, I'm just to be on safe, so I'm hitting save again. And now my product is done. So now if I go back to my page, I got to go back here to my builder. It was just that simple. Hopefully you saw that to be a simple task of creating an e-commerce. It was just that simple. There's no WooCommerce, no WordPress, none of that aggravating stuff. I've been there, done that. I'm telling you, that's why we created a content latte. So you don't have to go through the pain points we went through. Okay. Is it possible, question, is it possible to offer more than one subscription price, like a monthly fee and a yearly fee? Uh, yes, you can set on your subscribers. There'll be, you can do what we call variable, variable pricing. And that's when you can say this product comes on um, price differently and you can set those up. So yes, you can. Thanks for that question. So let's go back to our page. So now the um, opt-in is done. 
the landing page is done. Now over here in your thank you page, we now have that connected, right? So we click here to the um, edit. This is where it's gonna go to the store and it's going to um, open up and this is going to be the product, the name of the product. I can choose it if this is from the other time. So now I'm choosing the demo day product because um, that's what's one in this particular case. You can, you'll, whatever list of products are available, they'll all be listed here. And then you hit select. Um, I think because I made it a paid product, the other thing, my offer is not for paid. So that's why I had them both in there. So I'm going to just make the change just so it doesn't, it should be okay though. It should be okay. But because the op, the funnel that we had was not for a paid offer, it was for a freebie. So if it was a paid offer, then you'd have the e-commerce component come up, which is going to be for them to do a checkout page. And you would tweak that very similarly as you see me doing for here. Okay. So now this is complete. And so now if I want to, I can view not only this page. So now if a person clicks on here, they're gonna be opting. And because it was a paid product, that's why it came up this way. I should have I kept it. But here they're gonna add it to the cart and it's gonna force them into um, a purchase because they hadn't done that already. That's the difference when you make, when you choose a paid product versus a freebie, they're gonna be forced to go through the checkout. If I go back here and I close it and I change that product to a not for paid product. Hold on one second, let me change this out. I'm going to hit save. Now watch what happens when we go to thank you. And here we go. Now when I click the download the report, did it not go? Is it still forcing to go to the cart? Oh, it's still forcing to go to the cart. Should have been a direct uh, download. Okay, I, to, I think I did something on my side. My, oh, forgive me for that. So in this case, because it's zero points, then they're just going to go straight to the checkout. I shouldn't have done that. It should have been a direct point download. I think I did something wrong. Then they'll have to fill this out. Yeah, I, I made it. I think I messed up when I made the other product. So forgive me for that. So that in and of itself is your funnel. So now you have the three pages that will be built out. You notice how they're all connected with each other. You have your landing page, they'll have the opt-in experience, and then they're gonna have their thank you page and they'll be able to do their download. After you've done the build on that part, the second part is going to, the last part is gonna be your email automations. Inside of your kit, you had the opportunity, you had inside of the kit, um, a template for welcome email sequencing. And why that's important is that you want to be able to um, acknowledge the person's receipt and then start the nurturing process. So you have a five-day e welcome email sequencing template inside of the kit that you're able to take and address and utilize right away. So inside of the platform, you have your email automation that will allow you to do just that. So just quickly, I'm going to show you what that will look like. So here um, you'll notice again, you have your store, here's your contacts. So when people make their purchases, this is where their names are gonna be showing up here. And then you'll be able to use those same names in that list over here in email and automations. So you have two things to look at. There are campaigns, which are basically like broadcasts. You send out one blast email to everybody. And then this automations where you're taking them through a sequence of emails that you can pre-populate over a series of days and times. And that's what a series with a sequence, email sequencing would look like. So here in the platform, you're going to come inside of here and you can um, give it a name. So we're just gonna create this one. This is our email sequencing. And it looks very similar to if you've done flow charts before. So I want you to think of it in that same way. How are you flow charting the experience 
and saying here, I'm going to send out when a person makes a purchase, this is the trigger. So you're going to click here and say, okay, how do I want to start my email sequence? Well, I only want to send this email sequence to a certain group of people. So what's going to trigger the email sequence? In this case, it's going to be somebody opting in. So you're going to click on this and say, when do you want to start the email automation? I want it to start on a trigger. The trigger is going to be when a person is added to a list in this particular case. So you're going to say, or in this case, makes a purchase is what's coming soon because we we're tweaking it. So here, add to a list. So here you can select the list. And this one is going to be the default list, or it could be the um, demo day product that they bought the workbook then they would get that as the product. So you can pick the list that you want and then you hit confirm and then you're good. And you just click out. So now that's my trigger and then I'm good. And you click outside. Sometimes we're still working on the tweaks. And then you're gonna say, okay, once that person starts an email and buys that product or downloads that product, you want them to then receive an email. And then this is where you'll start to do your build. So you're going to give your email subject line, who is it from, and then you can edit the email itself. We have templates too, just like we have templates for the uh, landing pages and all the other components. We have templates for the email itself, templates for that, and you can go in and make the edits. Here's just a very simple one. And all I did here is, I'm gonna, is I opened up, I think I have to change my screen. Okay, I'm going to answer your question in one minute, Kevin. Hold on. Um, I want to, sh I have to share my other screen here. Okay, so uh, where's mine? Did it switch over? Okay, I just have to do share screen screen. Um, so here inside of um, Adobe, inside of your kit, you got the five day welcome email sequencing campaign. All you have to do in this case is copy and paste and make the edits. So just highlight the text, copy it, come back in to your template inside of uh, Content Latte and the email automations, paste it in just like you see here and make the edits as you need to and customize it. You can still notice you have building blocks over here. If I want to, I can add a picture. If I want to, I can add a button. So you can make it the same builder components are available for you inside of the email automation system as well. So you're going to customize and create an email for that person to get right after they've made their purchase. And you can create that. <clears throat> okay. Um, and you can have that available and building that out. And you can tweak it. Once you've done that, you're just going to hit your save button. And you'll see that those are all there. And then you step out and now you're back in your sequence. Make sure you hit your save button often. So always, always tell people save often. It auto saves, but you need to save often. And then here is then you can create the delay. So that delay is going to be the next day. So I only want to delay it one day. You may say, I only need the delay maybe 30, you know, 36 hours, whatever the sequencing is. But a welcome sequence, you want to get into a rhythm of sending people emails so that they are accustomed to getting it as and because you're building that relationship. And also that is training the inboxes to accept your emails on a routine basis and that they're opening them. So that's what you want to be able to do. You would build out the email sequencing in the same way. This is email number one. If you click on here, you'll notice there's a little note box. You can click on here. You can put notes. Right here, I put in, this is welcome number one. You can put other comments that you want here. And I can say, this is, this is a demo. And hit that. And now that's a new note. And I can pin it. And now that's what people will see if you're using it. Just little notes for yourself if you want to. I always feel that that's important. And so here again, email, delay, email, delay, until you get through your entire sequence. Like I said, this one is a five-day one. And then you'll start them coming through their funnel and take them down another path. And that's just as simple as it gets. So now you've got a template that you've created. 
Let me take you back. You've created, a, identified a template funnel. You've gone in and you've made edits to the different pages in your funnel, discard. In this case, you had your landing page, your opt-in page, and your thank you page. The builder is synonymous with all of the different interfaces, and you're gonna make the necessary connections. You also have your store where you're gonna place your product or your service, it doesn't matter, and build that library out. <clears throat> And then you also can, if you wanted to add a discounts and offers, you have that ability there. So when they check out, they could put in a promo code. So you have that functionality there. The subscription details are also here for you. I know somebody was asking with respect to that. So there are components when it comes to subscriptions and the analytics, and you can put uh, tracking and pieces and parts for that there um, is also available. So I just wanted to give you a quick kind of down and dirty of what Content Latte has to offer so that when you are in, as you continue through your build um, components in the kit, that you know where you could land. So now that being said, as a closing, what are your next steps? So this means that, uh, yes, you have a 14 day free trial with Content Latte. After that, the, the um, platform is only like as low as $13 a month or $18 a month. It goes to $13 a month if you pay it a, a year um, annual fees in advance. Um, and you have access to everything um, that I've shared with you. The entire suite is there. You get, uh, it, everything is just a little different when it comes to the different plans that are offered to you. Um, but here's what I would say. Do not initiate your 14 day free trial until your product is ready. And why is that? Because what I want you to be able to do is know that your product is created, right? Your creative pieces of the product is done and ready so that you can easily spend a day just to come in here and build out your sales funnel with your landing page, your opt-in, and your email sequencing, simple order. And again, using a template, it shouldn't take you that long to do. And what does that then leave you with? then if you that's only one day out of your 14 days, I want you to be able to then go into sell mode and start to promote your offer and get the traffic to your site so that you can see it for yourself as far as all the nuances that come with the, the, um, the transactions and the interfacing and how everything is moving and apart, the data that you're going to be able to access, you're going to have access to all of that. So I always encourage people when they have a bundle, when they have one of the boot camp kits, is do not initiate your free trial until you're ready to go build out that component and be ready so that you can really utilize it. I don't want you to have wasted time with um, initiating your account and then you're not utilizing it to its utmost. So focus on getting your product or your service ready with the language that you want so that you can build out its home here inside a content latte and then turn on the switch and let's start selling and sharing the information. Um, if you haven't already done so, take that also inside of, um, sorry. You can take that inside of the uh, content creation tips and more Facebook group. That's our shared space where you can share your offer in there. Give That could be your testing ground, give feedback, get questions. All of that can also be placed inside of our community of uh, solopreneurs, freelancers, and coaches like yourself and take advantage of the feedback. And also just sharing your offer. We have Seller Saturday. Every Saturday, all day is an opportunity for people to share their offer at no fee. So it's a good testing ground as well and get feedback as well. So take advantage of that. So if you don't have any other questions, I'm gonna make sure if you have any questions, please let me know. I'm gonna let you even unmic. Um, unmute yourself. You should be able to unmute yourself. Let me see. I think I did it so you can unmute yourself. Yeah, you should be able to unmute yourself. If you have any additional questions, um, Wanted to see how this would help me build a membership for, from a list to membership and community creation. Yes. So it's all about your funnel design, uh, Catalin, with respect to um, how you can, the infrastructure is here 
to allow you to do that. Um, it's about your plan and how you're sequencing out and bringing people into your funnel that you want to take them into a membership. So what is your low ticket offer, your free offer? And then what are you doing to cultivate the relationship enough that they see value and what you have to offer that they will want to pay to be in a membership? And what is that membership are you giving to them? If it's um, uh, for, and then for what type of return on their investment? So you want to kind of think of it along those lines. So when you look at that map, your funnel design template that you have in your toolkit as well as there, it's if that's your end goal is a membership site, then you would have taken into account all of the, you know, how long would it take and how are you looking to cultivate that funnel and bringing people through and what would that look like? And that's what your funnel design um, template offers you an opportunity to kind of think that through. Any other questions? Okay. Well, I don't want to keep you any more than we have. So please, if you have any other questions come to mind, shoot me an email anytime. You can direct message me inside a Facebook group as well. But you all have my email address or inside of Content Latte, um, um, the support, not, support at contentlatte.co. And we'll be able to provide you support there. There's also video tutorials and builds inside of the platform itself. So you don't have to rely <laughs> simply on the video today. But there is an academy of video tutorials that are built in there for you um, that uh, I and Stan have uh, created for you to have access to. So you do know that you have access to that. So with that said, I want to thank you all for showing up today. And for those of you who are watching this as a recording, again, thank you. Continue to build your first offer. And then I love to see your finished products and invite me to the opening. All righty. Until next time. Thanks, guys. Have a good day. Bye-bye.